Sophie Schlacey with ET, and today I want to reintroduce you to one of my favorite young artists, Ray Lynn. Now, it's been five years since Ray first caught Blake Shelton's ear on The Voice, and since then, so much has changed. She's really been working hard, honing her craft, writing, and now she is finally ready to release her first full-length album called Wild Horse. Only I had the chance to sit down with Ray for some real talk about what it actually takes to make it after The Voice and what she's learned about fame from Blake Shelton. I was trying to figure out if I wanted my record to be just a self-titled record because it's my first record. But I love it when a body of work has a name. My mom told me about this poem that she had just found that my grandma wrote about my mother. And it was titled Wild Horse and it was talking about how my mom was the good kind of crazy. And when she read me this poem, I began to cry because it was just so perfect. I was like, oh my God, that's gotta be the title to my record. And then I was like, but now I gotta write this song. Then I write to him, big hug, jump in. You co-wrote 11 out of the 12 songs. Out of 12. How personal is each song? Every song, if you asked me about it, I could tell you where I was when I wrote it and why I wrote it. And every song is your story. This record really just shows where I've been in the last four years. I've changed so much as a woman and I've learned so much about myself and my record really showcases that. You know, some of these songs are definitely not in the headspace that I am in now, you know, but they were when I wrote them. And it's really cool to look back and see Oh my God, I was so sad when I wrote that song. Like, or, oh my gosh, like, I was so sassy when I wrote that song, you know? And I've changed a lot as a person in these last five years. I was on The Voice when I was 17 years old. Now, you're on the same label as Blake, yeah. but there's no collaboration no. on your album. First of all, there was no songs that I felt like that we could do together. Cause I'm not gonna do like a love duet with him. That'd be so weird. He's like my like dad slash brother. What would a collaboration between Raylan and Blake Shelton sound like? Chaos, <laughs> I think. Blake Shelton plays such a huge role in Raylan's story, it's really impossible to tell without him. Not only has he been a mentor to her, but he's been a touring companion and a real life friend. Him and girlfriend Gwen Stefani were even on hand when Raylan married her husband Josh Davis in 2016. Due to scheduling, unfortunately, Blake couldn't be with us in person for the interview, but I was able to connect with him and ask a few questions like, why, out of all of the artists he's worked with on The Voice, has he bonded so strongly with Ray? The very first time I ever heard Ray Lynn's voice was sitting in my red chair on the on the on the show. I heard this voice start to sing and it just it was familiar, but it was also like something I'd never heard before. I hit my button and I turned around and instantly looked like a star. That's one of the times that Adam had been most upset with me was whenever uh, Ray Lynn chose me to be her coach. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I guess you could say she's definitely, uh, you know, my personal favorite. I just feel a bond with her that, uh, you know, is unexplainable. She's a star is what she is and, and uh, a great friend and a good kid and, and I just want to see the best that can possibly happen for her happen and, and that's why I'm glad to see her getting the recognition that she deserves with the uh, Love Triangle and this new album. It's going to be incredible. One thing that I can say about Blake is he's never changed. He doesn't let anything affect him. We went and ate lunch when I was like 19 in, in LA. We walked out of the restaurant and there was like all these people outside and I was like, how do you handle this? He goes, you just handle it. He's like, you just, you know, have a smile on your face and you talk to him. Like, and that's one thing that I take from him. It's, it's like, you just can't let any of that change you. You know, you always have to keep people around you that are gonna keep you grounded. Are there any habits or Blakeisms that you've picked up from being on the road with him? Oh my gosh, I don't know if I've picked anything up. I just know that like, every time we're on stage, we just wanna laugh. I don't know why, like, cause, it's just, he's just like a goober. It's just like going up there with your big brother. Or one time we were singing and he yells out my part. Like I, I was supposed to come and go, that's right. And he just yelled out, that's right. And I'm like, that's my part. Like, <laughs> and then we just started laughing. He's just awesome. That's a honky tonk where they boot stomp all night. What? That's right. Yeah. So before you were touring with Blake, you had also toured with Miranda Lambert. Yeah. Are you guys still in touch? Oh my God, of course. Yeah. I love her. Her record is so great. So you just celebrated your first wedding anniversary. Yeah. So a lot's changed for you as well. What's been the best part of the first year and the hardest part of the first year? The best part is just having your best friend with you all the time. And like when you say I do, that bond just like strengthens so much more. We're one, like I have this person that's going through it with me. You know, my husband joined the service and he's been gone for a little bit. And that, that part's been hard because I just, 
I feel like a piece of me is gone 24 seven. Like, like when something happens, I have to write it in a letter. I'm like, are we back to Noah and Allie days? Like, this is just crazy, you know? At the end of the day, I'm married to an incredible man and he's the, my best friend. And yeah, we might irritate each other sometimes, but who doesn't? You just announced your first headlining yeah. tour, the Brave tour. Brave tour. What can we expect? Fun. I am so excited. I like, I told my manager, I was like, I don't care if even 50 people show up. Well, we pray that there's more than 50. But I'm saying like, this tour is just gonna be 100% me. I wanted it to be a big dance party. It's gonna be like, we're gonna have like an opening DJ for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna go on for an hour and then we're gonna have a dance party at the end. Like, it's gonna be nonstop fun. Come on, let me see you shake it down. Come on, let me see you shake it down. <laughs> no singing show, reality show is gonna make you a superstar. What makes you a superstar is what you do after that. Right after The Voice, I went straight back to Nashville, started riding Monday through Friday, then got my butt in a van and traveled all across the US and went to every country radio station in the US, got ready in gas stations. Like, that's how it was. Like, you have to do that groundwork. And I did an interview with Adam Levine and, and Blake, and it was so true what Adam said. He said, Everybody who's a, who wants to be a singer now just wants to have instant success. He said, but it took me 10 years. It took Blake 10 years to get where we are today. Anybody who asked me, should I do The Voice? I'm like, of course you should do The Voice. You should learn from that experience. You should get fans. I said, but it doesn't stop when The Voice ends. Like, you're not a superstar at that point. You have so much more work to do. It's just the beginning. I'm the walking example of it. It's been five years. And now I know who I am. And and it's, it's taken me a little bit. But that, I think that's the beauty of, of when you really want something and, and it's your dream and it's your passion, you're gonna make it happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to click subscribe for all the best from Entertainment Tonight and check out Raylan's new album, Wild Horse. It is out March 24th.